Last uh, video, what we did is we uh, swaged one of these uh, terminal type, long barrel length terminals on the end of a cable, and we used these long, narrow, uh, cylindrical dies. Okay, on this one, we're going to swage a ball end onto the end of a, ter of a cable. It's going to look something like this. Now, the ball end really does the same thing as a fork style terminal would do, except that it does it with a separate terminal and the cable fits through and the ball retains it in the socket in the bottom of the cable. Okay, so when we go to do this, one of the most important things for us to remember is that that cable needs to be put onto the end before we swage our ball terminal in place or uh, we're kind of out of luck. Okay, we can go ahead and check our uh, ball to make sure we've got the proper size ball beforehand and you'll notice that the ball will fit through the opening in the 1 8 inch ball side of the gauge. Okay, you'll also notice that the terminal should fit through the unswaged portion of the terminal section of the gauge. So this is our proper sized terminal gauge. Now let's zoom in over here and see if we can properly see the the uh, terminal swaging blocks for the ball type deal. Notice this is the uh, for our eighth inch cable and it has positions one, two, three, and four. If you can see along the side each of those positions has a spot for a ball in it and uh, this one we're going to go ahead and swage and I'm, I've left the guide off so that you can see what happens a little easier. Okay, we're going to put the terminal onto the end and we're going to leave a little extra cable. Now precise positioning would be determined by whatever measurements we need. In this case we're just swaging it on so that's my precise position. Okay, I'm going to select the number one terminal location and I'm going to slide the ball so it just starts going into the ball socket. Tighten that up as tight as I can tighten it by hand and since I don't have a guide, I've got to hold it straight by hand, which is uh, real interesting. And we are going to go ahead and tighten our first swage. We come across once, twice, and that pulls it through. We've made one pass. Now, that one pass did a partial compression on the ball, and it did more of a compression on the shank. On the other style, we rotated it 90 degrees and did it again. On this style, on a ball, what we do is we reset the shank, we reset it into position number two, and we do it again, but we leave it 90 degrees offset for how we did it in the last one. Pull it in as much as we can, bring our handles out, and swage it for the position number two. This is taking a lot of force because this one is actually swaging the ball down quite a lot smaller, as well as the shank. And we've just gone ahead and done our second swage. Now we still have to do positions three and four. Once again, we got little fringes on the edge that were pressed in by the terminal, so we rotate the ball by 90 degrees, reset it inside the shank, and do our swage number three. Again, don't let your fingers get in there. You'll know about it if you do. There we go. Swage number three completed. And as you can guess, the reason there's a terminal number, uh, position number four is because we need to do a swage number four. So we lo locate it in position, spin it 90 degrees again, and this should be our final swage that we have to complete. One, two, three, four, and when we pull the thing apart, we have a completely swaged ball terminal. Notice that that ball terminal now will slide up inside our fork end, and that, of course, we'll have to trim a little bit of cable off of it, but that will give us a, uh, a good ability to join that onto whatever we need to join it. Let's inspect it to make sure that it's appropriate. Okay, when it's complete, the sleeve side of our go-no gauge should fit the ball the the sleeve should fit through the sleeve side and our ball should fit through the ball side of the go no go gauge that tells us that we have appropriately switched this ball 
and it is ready to go. We just made a ball end. Now, there is a double sleeved ball as well, and if we were using a double sleeved ball, we would have done it exactly the same way. No difference between a single sleeve ball and a double sleeve ball on the Kearney Swager. Makes you want to spend $7,000 and buy your own Kearney Swager, doesn't it? <laughs>